NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel uh, has a bit of a scoop on his hands, um, and it comes in two parts. An interview, a remarkable interview, um, and also some documents. Some documents that not only have never been disclosed before, they're documents of which nothing of the kind has ever been disclosed before. Uh, but let's start with the interview uh, with a U.S. Air Force drone pilot speaking with Richard Engel. This is remarkable tape. Watch this. You were from a tiny little town in Montana. You signed up for the Air Force. What did you think you were going to be doing? Um, I was told uh, that I would be working behind the lines. Uh, I passed all the tests. I got a score, scored really high on the ASVAB, and uh, my recruiter actually made a James Bond reference. And he's like, you know those guys that sit in the back and give James Bond all of the information he needs to execute his mission? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you'll be one of those guys. And I was like, that's really cool. So I didn't think I'd ever have to pull the trigger. I, I knew that people would be dying, but I wouldn't be, at least I believe that I wouldn't be a direct result of someone's death. You know how people say that uh, drone strikes are like mortar attacks, uh, artillery. Well, artillery doesn't see this. Artillery doesn't see the result of their, their actions. It, it's really more intimate for us because we see everything. We see the before action, or before action and then after. And so I watched this guy, I watched him bleed out. I watched the result of, I guess collectively it was our action, but ultimately I'm the re responsible one who guided the missile in. You put the laser on him and he's, now he's dead. Correct. Do you think that he was a combatant? I have my serious doubts now, but I didn't really question those voices in my head. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel speaking with a man who was in the United States Air Force, where it was his job, uh, stationed far away from any battlefield, uh, to help kill people using drones. Uh, there's a lot we do not know about our drone program, programs, either in the military or the even more secret CIA-run drone program. Uh, but tonight, beyond that interview, uh, Richard has a real scoop. He has examined the United States government's own accounting of who and where U.S. forces killed people. Uh, with remotely controlled unmanned drones. Uh, and it turns out the accounting is not what you would expect. NBC News has examined classified documents detailing 114 drone strikes in Pakistan in 2010 and 11. Locations, death tolls, alleged terrorist affiliations. But they also reveal what U.S. officials don't know, like how many killed. Between 7 and 10 in one strike, 20 to 22 in another. U.S. officials do seem certain they almost never kill civilians. In those 114 strikes, only one acknowledged civilian casualty. They want to maintain the myth that civilians are not harmed with drone strikes, which is simply implausible. What's more, about a quarter of those killed are described generically as, quote, other militants. It suggests U.S. officials don't always know exactly how many or who they're killing, sometimes targeting suspects based on what's called a signature terrorist profile, where they live, who they meet, who they talk to. Joining us now is NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel. Richard, thank you for being with us tonight. Absolutely. So what exactly is being counted in the document that you saw? They are counting casualties. They're counting victims and they are quite accurate about certain things. They, there's a column listing sometimes even the name of the compound or who owned the compound and the region where the strike took place. And then there's the category estimated number of combatants killed. And that is a range. Sometimes they say they killed seven or they killed maybe 10 or seven to 10. They're not exactly sure because these drones are fired from the sky. There's an explosion and they think, they estimate how many people were inside. Then there is a category listing who these people were. They are terrorist affiliations. And as you saw uh, in that uh, graphic, sometimes they're Al-Qaeda, sometimes they're from other militant groups, and about a quarter of the time they're listed as other militants, generic. So when you combine these two, you don't know exactly how many people you're killing, and you don't really know who you're killing exactly, because they're just generic militants, they're other bad guys, then you have a picture where, for a fairly substantial amount of time, the U.S. doesn't know who it's killing mm -hmm. or how many. And that does raise questions about 
the claims by the White House that this is almost an infallible program. And this wasn't really looking, this, this report uh, wasn't looking at the use of drones as an ethical weapon or are they efficient. It was looking at the claims that these weapons are always right, that they're somehow, somehow terrorist magnets that are f dropped from the sky and only find their targets. How can you claim infallibility and claim that in, in these 114 strikes, it was just one mistake, one person killed that was a civilian, and at the same time say, well, we don't really know how many people were killed right. or who they were, but we know they weren't civilians. I don't know how you can do that. Is there, do we know when these, when this accounting is from, and do we know that the targeting and the accounting is done in the same way now? Um, there is a, the, the, there's two types of drone strikes. This was done in 2010, 2011, and yes, the same targeting principles uh, apply. There's two types of, stroke, of attacks. Uh, one is a signature strike. Uh, and the other is a personality strike. Let's start with personality strike. Personality strike means you know who the person is. And they're a, a, a known militant. You follow them around. You are looking for them. And then you find an opportunity and you kill them. Signature strike is more secretive, more controversial, more problematic. This means you don't know specifically who the person is, but they have the profile, uh, the signature profile of a terrorist. Which you can tell from the sky. Because you are watching the same area over and over again. So you know the kind of places where they hang out, the kind of vehicles that they're driving, who they're talking to on the phones. So if there's a established terrorist compound and Al Qaeda militants are known to frequent this place and you see people coming in and out carrying things on a regular basis, and you know from intelligence who they're talking to on the cell phones, and their cell phones they're talking to are other people who are known militants, then you're extrapolating and saying, well, this person who's frequenting this area and talking to these people is probably a terrorist. We should kill him. And that him. person would get listed as other militant. Other militant. Other militant killed. Or foreign fighter. Or they might, in this case, list him as Al-Qaeda if they think they have enough evidence to link him to Al-Qaeda. But it's subjective. Yeah. The weapons are very precise. But at the end of the day, it's a human determination of who gets attacked and who gets droned. And you have people who are looking at lots of intelligence, but they are trying to, to read the intentions of somebody in Waziristan uh, before they've taken an action. And this is more detailed information. This is a more detailed list than anybody outside the government has ever seen about how those things, what those things are that we have done, where we did them, and why we think we did them yeah. at the time. NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel, thank you for joining us tonight.